Hello, this is Ms. DB, and in this video we're going to review some topics from algebra. This is 3.6 lines in the coordinate plane. So we'll write equations of lines, we'll use these equations to classify the lines as parallel, perpendicular, and neither, and also we're going to see if we have a right triangle. So there's a lot going on in this, in this lesson. And again, you should make sure that you have read the information in your textbook or watched the longer video. This is just going to go over how to do some of the problems on your book or on this section. So um, we, we have two forms of the equations of the lines that we're going to be using. We have point-slope form, and then we have a slope-intercept form. So this one, y minus y1 equals m times x minus x1 is called point-slope form. It's very useful if you know the slope or can find it easily and are given one point on the line. The other one is y equals mx plus b. This is called slope-intercept form. Very useful if you want a graph because it has the slope and the y-intercept. And we'll use both of those. Remember that if you have a vertical line, its equation is just x equals whatever the number is that it goes through on the x-axis. And the equation of a horizontal line is y equals wherever it goes through the y-axis. So on your worksheet, you have to write equations of lines in either of those forms. Let me get a little more space here. Let's do um, number one is a horizontal line. So a horizontal line is of the form right here. Y equals the coordinate where it will go through the y-axis. It's the y-intercept. So if you have a point 3, 7, this is the x-coordinate, this is the y. You could, you could even graph this. Here's the point 3, 7. That we want the horizontal line going through that point. So it's going to be y equals, and then you just put the coordinate where it goes through the y-axis, which is that 7. That's it. That's all you have to do for horizontal lines. Most of these will be more work. So the next one says to write this in point-slope form. So let's write point-slope form. That was, again, that we would have y minus y1 equals m parentheses x minus x1. And we're going to replace the y1 with the y-coordinate of the point they give us. We're going to replace the slope with the slope they give us, and we're going to replace the x1, x sub 1, with the x-coordinate of the point they give us. So all you do is you take these and plug them in where they belong. So you will end up with a equation of y minus, the y has to stay there, y1 is negative 5, is equal to m, which they tell us is negative 8 fifths, parentheses, x minus, this x has to stay there, and x sub 1 is 1. That's the equation in point-slope form. Now this side can be simplified a little bit because minus a negative 5 is the same as plus 5. So you'll simplify a little bit, and you do not have to do the distributive property over here because point-slope form leaves the parentheses there. And that's what you would write for number two. Now some of them, like number three, you have to find the slope first. So this one, you will first find the slope. And then once you find the slope, you will plug it into either, there's two ways of doing this one. Let's find the slope first. Okay, slope is found by taking the y coordinates and subtracting them over the x-coordinates and subtracting them. If you did the previous assignment, you had lots of practice finding slopes. So I'll take 5 minus 2 over 8 minus 4. y minus y over x minus x. So my slope is going to be 3 over 4. And that's what we use for m. Now I'm going to pick one of these points to use for x1 y sub 1 and plug them into point slope form. Even though it says to write it in slope intercept form, it's often easier to first use this form and then we'll change it. 
So we will write y minus y1 equals m times x minus x sub 1. And I will replace the y sub 1 with the y sub 1 coordinate 2. That'll go there. And I'll replace m with 3 fourths because that's what I found. And I'll replace x sub 1 with the 4 because that's the x coordinate of the point that I'm going to use. I'm not going to use both points, just one of them. Just pick one. So we have y minus y sub 1. y sub 1 is 2 equals m is 3 fourths. We found the slope. x minus x sub 1 is 4. Now we simplify this because we want to get it in slope intercept form, which is y equals mx plus b. If they had said to write in point slope form, I'd be done. To write it in slope intercept form, we need to simplify and solve for y. So by simplify, I mean do the distributive property on the right. Go ahead and finish that. So 3 fourths times negative 4 is negative 3. The 4s cancel when you multiply fractions. You could also have multiplied straight across the top, and you would still get negative 3. And now I have to add 2 to both sides because I want to solve this for y. So we end up with y equals um, 3 fourths x minus 3 plus 2 is a negative 1. And now it's in slope-intercept form as I was supposed to write it. So in number four, this one, we already have the slope given to us, and we have one point. So do it just like number three, except you get to start with where, we're, where we left off with the three-fourths for our slope. In number five, it says we have an x-intercept of negative two and a y-intercept of negative one, and they want us to write in point-slope form. Well, what does it mean if you have an x-intercept? It means that the line is going to cross the x-axis at the point that they give us, which is negative 2, so right here. And what does it mean to have a y-intercept of negative 1? It means the line's also going to cross the y-axis at negative 1. So if we were to sketch a line, it would look like this. So what is the coordinates, the, all the coordinates of the x-intercept? It would be the x-coordinate is negative 2 and the y-coordinate is 0. So that's one of our points. And the y-intercept is at negative 1. That means the x-coordinate is 0, and this y-coordinate is negative 1. So we have two points. And to write the equation of this line, we need the slope. You could find the slope from the graph that I sketched, or you could find the slope by using the slope formula. So once you find the slope, and I'll let you find the slope, then you'll plug it into point slope form, y minus y sub 1 equals m times x minus x sub 1. And then you'll pick one of these points to use for x sub 1, y sub 1. doesn't matter which one. And then you'll plug it in, and you'll be done. You won't have to simplify this or solve it for y because they want it in point slope form. And number 6 is a vertical line through the point 1, 4. x is 1, y is 4. So go back and look at vertical lines. And what is true about vertical lines? And how do we write their equations? And that's what you're going to do for number 6. On the next section, we're going to graph some lines. And when we graph lines, it's very nice to have the slope and the y-intercept. So that's in slope-intercept form, y equals mx plus b. If they're not written in that form, like number 7, you can first rewrite it in that form. Actually, I probably would rewrite it in that form. Or you can graph with point slope form by saying, what is the point, what is the slope? Like taking this equation apart and, and figuring out what they use to get to that. So number eight, remember, I'm going to do number eight first. So to graph in slope-intercept form, you first graph the y-intercept. And then from that point, you apply the slope, which is a rise of negative 4, which means to go down 4. 1, 2, 3, 4. And then kind of hold your place. And then do the run of 3. 1, 2, 3. And then put your other point. And then draw a line through the points and extending beyond. Now in, in Word, you can go to Insert, Shapes, and pick the line 
to go through your points. You can even make your um, points using Word too. So I could have went to insert shapes and picked like an like an oval or a circle, and I could have made a little point there, and I could have made another little point. Let's see if I can draw two on the same time. Yeah, there you go. So I've got my points there. One's blue and one's black, but that doesn't matter. And then um, you would draw your line through the points. Or you can go ahead and make these on your own paper, attach an image, or you can make them a sketch pad and then attach or attach the separate file, or you can copy and paste them into here, like a, a screenshot of it. And then um, let's look at seven. Number nine is um, a slope of negative one, so I'll write that down. In nine, the y-intercept is 2, the slope would be negative 1 or negative 1 over 1, just so you remember how to do slope. Okay, so look at 7. One way to do this would be to go ahead and solve this for y. The other way would be to take this apart and say, okay, y minus y1 equals m times x minus x sub 1. The slope is easy enough to find, that's 3 fourths, but what is the point that it goes through? It's not 3, 1. It's not 1, 3. The x coordinate would be the opposite of this because it's supposed to be x minus and it's x plus. So the x coordinate is negative 1 and the y coordinate is the opposite of that, which is negative 3. So you could graph this, even though you don't have the y intercept, you could go over to negative 1 and down to negative 3 and put a point. And then from there, you do the slope. You, you apply the slope. So that means up 3 and over 1, 2, 3, 4 and then you draw the line through those points. You could also, this is still number seven, if you prefer, solve this for y, and then you'll know what the y-intercept is. y plus three equals three-fourths times x plus three-fourths. It's not going to be as nice as the one we did on up above because you have to take three-fourths minus three. So that's negative two and a fourth, but, um, whoops, I forgot my x there. That might be a little tricky to figure out where the y-intercept is. Negative two and a fourth is like right here. But then how do you do the slope from that? You know, going up three, you'd have to go up to uh, negative one and a fourth and negative, you know, it's going to get a little tricky. So probably the best way on this one is to figure out what was that point that was on the graph and then graph it. Okay, and then the last section is on parallel lines and intersecting lines. So parallel lines have the same slope and different y-intercepts. Intersecting lines have different slopes. They can have the same y-intercept or not, it doesn't matter, but they have to have different slopes. And coinciding lines have the same slope and the same y-intercept. So this, it didn't write it, but this would be same or different y-intercept. It doesn't apply, it doesn't really matter. It doesn't affect it, whether or not it's intersecting. So when we are asked to classify a pair of lines, you could, of course, graph these, like in Sketchpad, or um, there's an online graphing that's really nice called Desmos. Just go to desmos.com. Because in Desmos, you don't even have to solve for y. You can just go ahead and graph whatever the equation is. So here's our equation in 10. Here's one of them, x minus 5y equals 0, and then this one. So in this form, it's very difficult to tell whether they're parallel, intersect, or coincide. I mean, you can't really tell unless you put them in slope-intercept form or unless you graph them. So I'm going to go ahead and rewrite each of them so that they're in slope-intercept form. So the first one is x minus 5y equals 0. Writing it in slope-intercept form means solving for y. So I have to subtract x from both sides, which would give me negative 5y equals negative x plus 0, but we don't need that really. And now I have to divide both sides by negative 5. Well, when you take negative x over negative 5, let's put a 1 there. That's the same. A negative over negative is positive. That's the same as 1 fifth x. And maybe I'll put the 0 just so you see that the y-intercept would be 0. The slope, so the slope would be 1 fifth. The y-intercept would be 0. All right, let's do the other one. y plus 1 
equals 1 fifth times x plus 5. So I'm going to write this in slope-intercept form. I'll first do the distributive property. 1 fifth times 5, or times 5 over 1, is 1. Because 5 times 1 is 5, over 5 is 5, and that simplifies to 1. Now I need to subtract the 1 from both sides. So I get y equals 1 fifth x plus 0. So the slope is 1 fifth, and the y-intercept is 0. That's the same thing I got for the first equation of the line. So what does it mean if the slope and the y-intercept are both the same? It means they're coinciding lines. If you graph these, these would be the exact same line on top of each other. So you're now asked to decide what kind of lines these would be. So you write coincide. And that's what you'll do for 11 and 12 as well. Solve them for y so that you have them in slope-intercept form. And then determine from that whether they are coinciding, parallel, or intersecting. Now the last one, number 13, we have y equals 5 and x equals negative 8. So think about, if you graphed these, what kind of lines those would be. y equals 5 would be up here. It would be a horizontal line going through at y equals 5. And x equals negative 8 would be over here at negative 8. So you can decide from there what kind of lines those would be. All right, and then the last section is on right triangles. Right triangles has, a right triangle has one right angle, as we've learned about. So the two of the sides have to be perpendicular. So if we want to find out if we have perpendicular, we need to find the slopes of the lines, the three lines that will make up that triangle, and then see if any of them have slopes that are opposite reciprocals. And if they do, then we'll know that it has a right triangle. So just two of them have to have um, opposite reciprocals. I, this is a typo, so it's KL, LM, and this should be KM here. So let's, let's do 16, since I started writing on it. The slope of segment KL. So here's our two lines to use, or points to use. So I'm going to do Y minus Y, so 1 minus 4 over x minus x, which would be 2 minus a negative 2. So I get a slope for this one of negative 3 fourths. Okay, let's find LM. So for LM, we're going to use these two points. So 8 minus 1 for the y minus y over 1 minus 2. So 8 minus 1 is 7 over negative 1. So, so far I can't determine whether this is a right triangle or not. These slopes are not opposite reciprocals of each other, and we'll have to move on. So then next we'll look at the, um, come on, the last two coordinates are k and m. So we have to do y minus y, 8 minus 4, over 1 minus a negative 2, which is 1 plus 2. So we'd get 4 over 3. So the KM to LM, those are nothing. But look at KM, the 4 thirds, and the negative 3 fourths. Those slopes are opposite reciprocals of each other. If I multiply them together, I will get negative 1 which means that the lines are perpendicular. So if these two lines are perpendicular to each other, they form the two legs of the right triangle. So I can say yes for that one. All right, so good luck on this one. Um, there's just one problem at the end that you can give it a try. And let me know if you have any questions or if you get stuck on anything. Thank you very much.